when we come together, we come together as a body of believers. Now, some people will say, well, you don't need churches. Um, you don't need buildings. Church is the people. Is church the people? Amen. It is, right? The church is the body of Christ, which is made up of individual people. First Peter talks about how uh, each building blocks is building the kingdom. Uh, and so we are part of the building. So God uses um, earthly illustrations to give uh, a presentation of a spiritual truth. Now, when we talk about church and coming together, the early church met in homes. And a lot of people say, oh, well, there you go. We should meet in homes. Um, how many of you have a home big enough for all of us to fit in? Nobody? I'm just trying to find the rich people. <laughs> uh, just kidding. But listen, when we come together as a church, the early church met in homes because if you know in Acts chapter 16, we're going through the book of Philippians. The Philippian church only had three believers in the beginning. Can they meet in a home? They sure can. Okay, what about the church at Jerusalem? If you see Acts chapter 2, you'll find out that in the beginning, 3,000 got saved. Then 5,000 got saved. Then a multitude of multitudes got saved. They didn't even have a number to count all those people. Okay, so you're not going to be able to fit that many people in one home. So what did they do? Well, the early church began to meet in the synagogues. What is a synagogue? It's just a place where the Jews built so that they could come together to hear the word of God. And so Gentiles were allowed to use that. And they did. They came together to hear Paul would preach in the synagogues. On Saturday, he would preach to the Jew, Jesus. And then on Sunday, he would preach to the Gentile, Jesus. They both needed Jesus, right? So it talks about coming together as a church. 1 Corinthians 11 says, when you come together as a church. Okay, so we're, we're, it's never said God demands you come to a church building. But we are to be called together. That's actually the definition of church, ecclesia. This is where we get our English word church from. It means a called out assembly, called out of your homes to come together, uh, a gathering, a called out gathering. And so when we talk about the church, we're to come together. There are times when you, I mean, we praise and worship God all day, every day, or we should, amen? amen. Don't just come here on Sunday and do praise and worship. Your life should be filled with praise and worship. I'm coming back here, and the backsliders are going, oh, he's coming back. He's going to call me out. What's he going to do? Maybe he's going to ask me to pray. I don't know. And so I'll go back here. I'll go back up front. These folks are used to me spitting on them. All right. So when we talk about coming together as a church, um, we come together, and we fulfill what God wants. He wants us to be together. God never meant for anybody to be alone. Started in the garden. That's where he says man is not meant to be alone. That's why he made a helpmate for him. The church is not meant to be alone. That's why everybody was to gather together to pray for one another, lift one another up uh, through prayer. So when we talk about coming together, do we come together on the Sabbath day? No. What is the Sabbath day? Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath day. It was established by God. God worked six days and he rested on the seventh. The seventh day is Saturday, which is the Sabbath. That is the day the Jews were required not to do any work under the law. We are not under the law. We're under grace. Okay, so if Sabbath was Saturday and that's when the Jews worshiped and Christianity come out of Judaism, why do we worship on Sunday? When did Jesus rise from the dead? On Sunday. Why do we practice on Sunday? In honor of his resurrection. To be honest with you, it's just a practice of the church. So don't, see, this is why Paul says in Galatians, don't get all crazy about your traditions. <laughs> this is a tradition. Why do I say tradition? Because the early church, when they met in homes, was usually all week long, because they had plenty of time. But when they come together corporately, they could only have a certain amount of times to do that. And the only places big enough to do that was synagogues. And so in the synagogues, they'd have to wait till Sunday, because Saturday was the Sabbath, and that's when all the Jews would gather. 
And they began to gather on Sunday, which was the first day of the week. And it was called the Lord's Day because that's the day he rose from the dead. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, uh, the apostle John, remember when he was on the Isle of Patmos? If you read Revelation 1, 10, it says, I, John, was on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's Day. What day is that? Sunday. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Okay, so Sunday. So what we have done is they come together on Sunday to praise and worship corporately together. This is what we call corporate worship. Does that make sense? This is why we come together Sunday, for corporate worship, because it was an early practice, because you need to set time away to worship God away from all the stuff of the world. You give God glory while you're out into the world doing all the things that you need to do. But when you come here on Sunday, this is the time that we all take away to come together. We're to pray. Sunday school class, we pray. We pray in the auditorium. We pray for many things. We've got some stuff before we get into our message that we'll pray about. But it was to come together in prayer. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about how God is a God of order. And we do things in an orderly fashion. So this is why we have order. We, we have Sunday school, which is to hopefully prepare you, uh, be a time of prayer. We come in, we do praise and worship, which is a time to prepare you. We open in a word of prayer. We get into the word of God. So hopefully your heart is prepared to hear from God, and that's why we, um, why we do these things. We sing because Ephesians 5.19 says that we're to be filled with the Spirit, right? 5.18 says we're to be filled with the Spirit. An effect of being filled with the Spirit is singing. Singing to one another, making music and melody in your heart unto the Lord. That's an effect of the Spirit. We need to be filled with the Spirit, right? That's why I say let all the stuff of the world go. Come in here, be filled with the Spirit, allow the Spirit of God to work in and through you. Now, we sing because the Psalms say, sing to the Lord. Uh, I think Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And that's what we want to do. We want to come, we want to praise God. It's an effect of being filled with the Spirit. It's something that we want to uh, give to God because God alone is the one that deserves all praise and honor. Amen? Amen. If he wasn't worthy of it, we wouldn't do it. But he is, and so we are doing it. Uh, so if you don't come in to sing, well, sorry. If you don't like the music, <laughs> sorry. We look at the words because it honors and magnifies the Lord Jesus. Amen? And so regardless of the tempo, regardless of whether you have drums, I think that one's a funny one because the Old Testament in Psalms says, let the people that bang the drums praise God. They're like, we're, we're not going to use the drums. That's the devil's music. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. God said praise him with the drums. So anyway, I'm sorry. Um, we come together as a group of believers. We need a place to come, especially when you have a lot of believers. This is our local assembly. And, and so if you're a member of Mission Point, this is where we come together to meet, to pray, to sing, and there's another important aspect about singing, and I want you to understand this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14, I believe. You can go there and research it. Elijah was with the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom had separated by this time. You have the northern kingdom, Israel, southern kingdom, Judah. And so by this time, the king of Moab was not giving homage to the king of the northern kingdom. And so he made an allegiance with um, the southern kingdom to go and just wipe out Moab because they didn't give them a tribute. And that's the way things were. You tribute or we're just going to wipe you out. Well, Moab stopped giving tribute to the king of Israel. And so he got mad, took the southern kingdom and said, we're going to go wipe them out, come with us. So they said, okay. They get out there and they're like, man, we've been out here. We haven't even fought nobody. We're dying of thirst. We have no water. We have no food. We have nothing. Um, maybe we should ask God what we should have done. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, now you want to ask God? Uh, we're out here about to starve to death, and we're thirsty. And so they said, don't we have a prophet here? And Elijah was a prophet. He was there. And they said, go ask Elijah to ask God. And so they asked Elijah, and he said, man, he goes, if it wasn't for the king of Judah... I can't stand you, king of Israel. I can't stand you, and I wouldn't do nothing for you. 
But if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't do it. But he says, bring me a minstrel. And when the music played and they sang, he was prepared to hear the word of the Lord. The, the Lord came to him after he had prepared his heart. We talk about not reacting out of emotion, right? Elijah understood that principle, and it calmed him so that he could hear from God. So the point is, when we come together, we're to pray for one another. It's to fellowship with one another. It's to gather corporately, and God to just take a time during the week to separate all things and worship God corporately. Pray, sing, Sing is praise to God because he deserves it, but it's also to prepare our hearts to hear the word of the Lord. That's why we do things in an orderly fashion. And the very last thing we do is open the word of God and we begin to preach and teach from it so that you can learn. And I'm hoping, and it's my prayer, and I'm not just talking to hear myself speak because I could talk all day and I love to talk. But I'm, ta- I'm telling you why we do what we do. You can have a service without music, but you can't have a service without the word of God. That's why we come together, is to hear the word of God. We do extra stuff by praising, and we do all these other things, but our focus is to hear from the word of the Lord so that we can go out into the world and give him glory. 1 Timothy 4.13, he says, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, and to teaching. And that's what we do. We read the Scripture, we expound on it, And then we uh, teach you what it means and how it applies. We do the ordinances, the Lord's Supper, and we do baptism. Uh, Those are the two that are called out from Scripture. And so everything that we do is for a purpose. God is a God of order, so we do things in an orderly fashion. I hope you understand that, and I hope this makes sense to you. Just because we don't have no praise team this morning doesn't mean much. Uh, It just means that we're getting into the Word of God without it. So before we begin, uh, I'm going to open with a word of prayer. Uh, I got some requests that I'd like for you to remember, and then we will uh, we'll get into our study on Apologetics Month, talking about expectations. And so when you come to church, I hope you expect not what you get out of it, but what you put into it. Your prayer, your praise, and your heart preparation will tell you what you're going to get out of it. If you don't put anything in, you'll not get anything out. I talked to Hannah Woody, Hannah and Colin Woody, last night. Um, they're down in Columbus. Uh, their baby, uh, Waylon, um, is, has some heart issues. And so pray for him. His uh, heart rate was over 200 and something. Uh, and, and so as a newborn, that was very dangerous. So they have some medicine that is keeping his heart rate down to... It went into, um, it was out of rhythm, and they had to do numerous things to get it back into rhythm, and uh, the medication is keeping it in rhythm. So two things that they're going to do down there, she should be down there for about a week, she said. Um, They're going to try to figure out why this was caused and what the end result is, whether he has to be on medication for life or this is going to be a temporary thing. Uh, So if you wish to pray for them, pray in that manner. Uh, pray that they don't have to be on medication for a long period of time and pray the child will come back to uh, a normal, healthy baby that can grow up uh, uh, without uh, heavy types of medication. Pray for Matt Parsons. Last Wednesday, he had his appendix removed, and so it was more innovative than what they thought. Uh, matter of fact, they had to move some of his bowels around, and so uh, it really took a little, uh, a little toll on him. He's been in a lot of pain since he got out. Matter of fact, he went home the same day, and he was in so much pain, he went back into the hospital. He's home now, uh, resting, and so uh, continue to pray for Matt. Um, He's doing better each day, but as he said, the the process is slow. Uh, Matter of fact, uh, probably the medication, but he gets a little windy. But he wanted me to give this to you. He said, please read this to the church this morning. Dear church family, I want to thank you for the cards, the prayers, the food, uh, standing in the gap for me during this difficult time in my life. I'm mending, yet it's very slow. More than anything, I praise God that I'm alive. At the moment, I'm not at the, I'm not at the do much I can. Tr- <laughs> That's probably the medication talking. 
It's all good. We love you, Matt. Um, all he can do is pray. Was, I've been in prayer for all of you since surgery. My heart is overwhelmed with all of the new salvations, not only in our church uh, from VBS, uh, but his father's church had 21 salvations during their VBS program as well. Uh, please remember to pray for each of these that have been saved within the last few months. Uh, thank you for loving on me and my family. I love you all this morning uh, more than you'll ever know. Love, Matt Parsons. P.S. Now I know what Tom Craft says, that I've been around since Moby was a minnow. I feel like Moby this morning. God bless. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to have to ask him when he gets better and he's back in his right sound mind. But uh, please pray for Pastor Matt. Um, pray for our country. We need it. This is an election year, and, and I'm telling you, man, things are... God's in control, and I understand that, but we need to do our part as well. Uh, matter of fact, I saw a Christian brother post that he's not doing anything because God's in control of everything. Well, that's not doing your part. We do what we can do because God asks us to do that. And then when we do what we, only we can do, then we sit back and watch what only God can do. But we still need to do our part. Uh, so don't forget that. Let's open with a word of prayer, and we'll get into our study this morning. Father God, we thank you for just this opportunity to come and explain why we do what we do. We thank you for your love and your grace. You give us your grace when we don't deserve it, and your mercy, and we just thank you so much. We thank you that we have the ability to come and just praise and worship you together corporately. We thank you we have the ability to do that at home when we're not here. We thank you that we have the ability to come before the throne. By the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, we come before your throne and we make our requests known unto you. And so we lift Hannah and Colin and their family and uh, little baby Waylon up to you, God. You know what's going to take to fix them and to heal them. I pray, God, that you would just reach down and allow that child to come back into rhythm without medication, allow them to go home, and that child to grow up uh, a normal life. But if that's not your will, I pray for grace for Hannah and Colin to deal with any complications of raising that child that may come about. I think we forget about how things go when we, we want this, but then things don't happen that way, and, and we don't pray for the grace and the comfort and peace of going through what you want us to. And so I just pray that your will be accomplished in their life. I pray for Pastor Matt, Lord, that you would continue to work on his pain management, uh, continue to work on his healing, and just be there with him uh, mentally, Lord, uh, protect his mind. We pray for our country, God, that your people will stand up in the gap uh, for you, for biblical worldview, for Christian principles, and that we would vote that way. We would do our part and get out and vote, and then sit back and watch what your will is. We know you're in control. Daniel wrote that you are in control of all things, and you, you give the kingdom to whomever you want, whenever you want. And so this is what we ask, God, but we pray your will be done. Be with us this morning, Lord, and uh, I pray that this will be something that we can have, that we can open our hearts and minds through apologetics. We need to build our defense, Lord, of why we believe what we believe and uh, go out so that we can give that defense that people who ask of the hope that we have with meekness and fear. We love you, Lord, and we commit our time this morning, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.